So in this first part, I want to give you the industry definitions for the different types of wireless networks. Now in this graph, we're giving you the different terms that are used and you'll see the circles or the ovals that are in the middle, those are really defining coverage. And so for a personal area network, we're talking about things that are in your close proximity, that are close to you. Things like between your cell phone and your earpiece. That would be an example of a wireless personal area network. If we extend the range a little bit more, then we come out to the wireless local area network. And wireless local area networks, for instance, you may have a Wi-Fi access point deployed in your home that gives you coverage within your home. Then we talk about wireless metropolitan area networks. So this is where we're going outside of the home. We're perhaps covering the city area or a local town. Example technologies here would be WiMAX. WiMAX was a technology that Cisco invested in for many years. Then if we go further out, we talk about things called the wireless wide area networks. And this is really where you'd start thinking about your cellular networks. Your cellular networks are effectively nationwide. There's a few places in the States where the terrain is rather prohibitive that you won't actually get coverage. But in the areas where people are, in the city areas, in the rural communities, they all have cellular coverage. And so it's known as a wide area network. And if you're not familiar with the cellular technologies, there'd be things like GSM, GPRS, which is data of a GSM, UMTS, which is your 3G networks, or maybe even LTE, which are your 4G networks that are rolling out. So let's step through each of these different types of network. The first one here is the wireless personal area network, the PAN. Again, as I mentioned, close proximity, so normally between 20 and 50 feet. Sometimes the technology is just a one-to-one -one relationship, like between a gaming console and display screen. Other times it can actually form a small network. So for instance, Bluetooth is capable of forming a small PICO net, and you can have up to eight active devices communicating with one another. They may or may not be standardized. So they may follow a standard like 80215, or they may be a proprietary standard. 80215 actually encompasses many different wireless personal area network standards. So Bluetooth is covered under that. The Zigbee wireless censoring network is also covered under that standard. So it's not just one standard, it's actually a multitude of different radio standards covered in the IEEE 80215. So then we have the wireless local area networks, which of course the wireless LANs is where we're going to focus our attention to in this course. And they have better coverage. You know, you're going wider than the personal area network, up to about 100 meters. If you think in metric terms, if you're thinking in feet and inches, then that would be two to 400 feet is normally what you'd expect with a wireless local area network. The difference here is that you're not just connecting one person's personal devices, but you may have several people that are connecting. And so as this illustration shows here, I've got several different computers connecting to a wireless access point. With a personal area network, they're really sharing data between the different devices. When you start thinking of a wireless LAN, you typically also think about connecting to the corporate network, connecting to the internet. And so multiple people connecting through and forming a wireless network. 
80211 is the dominant standard in wireless LANs and it uses the modulation techniques called direct sequence spread spectrum and orthogonal frequency division multiplexing and we'll be talking more about those later on. But whenever you want to get up to really really high data rates you want to be using an OFDM radio. When you're doing something like low data rates like censoring networks then using a direct sequence spread spectrum radio makes a lot more sense because it's a lower cost, cheaper radio. And the last comment on this slide is that the behavior is kind of bursty in behavior. And what that means is that you have multiple devices sharing a radio resource. And so we're going to take turns. I'll send some data, then you'll send some data. So we're going to take turns in using it. And so our transmissions tend to be bursty as opposed to continuing 100% of the time. So metropolitan area, the range does vary quite a bit, but you'd normally expect a metropolitan area to be covering the metropolitan area, as the name suggests. When we look at wireless lands, quite often those are placed on the ceiling, you know, 10, 20 feet high. When you start looking at metropolitan area networks, you're looking at potentially transmission towers. They're deployed much higher up. And that's what really enables them to get much higher coverage. And they're deployed in frequency bands that allow a higher transmitted power. And so, you know, the 3.5 in this country, overseas you might see somewhere between 3.3 .3 and the 3.6. You'll see it in the 2.5 gigahertz band in this country. And when I say this country, I'm talking about North America. And then you also see the 5.8 gigahertz band. And this is deployed outside. The regulation is a little bit different outside. They can get up to higher power levels, which means their signals are going to go further, which means their coverage is greater. If it's a technology which is focused on providing high-speed data, you're going to see an OFDM radio. And 80216, which most people refer to as WiMAX, is an OFDM-based technology. With WiMAX and the frequencies it's deployed at, it is can be deployed for line of sight, backhaul kind of requirements, but it's typically deployed in a non-line of sight environment, much like cellular is deployed, where you put up one tower and then it provides coverage all the way around the tower in order for people to connect. And then you have the wireless wide area network. And this is when it goes out of the metropolitan areas where you have the dominant number of people. And it goes now into suburban areas, into rural areas, along highways that are connecting towns and cities. Now, in the cellular networks, in the city areas, you have small cells that will be perhaps less than half a mile. But out in the rural areas and along highways, cellular towers are normally anything up to 20, maybe 25 miles. If you're thinking kilometers, maybe about 35 kilometers. So they're much larger towers out in the rural and along the highways in order to maximize the coverage. The frequencies can vary. If you're cellular, you'll be down at the 700, 800, 900 megahertz, maybe the 1.8, 1.9 gigahertz. You can also deploy it at higher frequencies as well. Now, cellular technologies like GSM and GPRS are based on what we call a time division multiple access TDMA. Older technologies were based on TDMA and so those technologies as we move away from voice into high-speed data are transitioning out and so you see the transition from GSM 2G technologies which are TDMA to CDMA which is 3G CDMA's code division multiple access where now I'm using codes to distinguish between my different uses on the network 
But again, as I mentioned before, as cellular is migrating to higher and higher speeds, when we now look at cellular 4G technologies, they've all moved to ERFDM, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. And again, that is the area interface of choice if you're doing high data rates, and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a personal area network, a wide area network, a metropolitan area network, or a wide area network. If you're doing higher data rates, you want to be moving to an ERFTM radio. The last comment here about the behaviors lower data rates, that's really in comparison with wireless LANs and metropolitan area networks. So if you get up to a really big cell, you've got a lot of users sharing that spectrum and the data rates per user will be lower and also simply because you've got wider coverage your data rates below and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. So we're going to start focusing in on wireless LANs but I did want to share with you an example of another technology and in this case I actually chose a wireless personal area network and something called Zigbee. Now the Zigbee standard is defined by the Zigbee Alliance but as I mentioned earlier is also been incorporated into the 802.15 standards group and it's actually called 802.15.4 as indicated on this slide. Zigbee is used for a lot of censoring equipment and so you can have a home controller and then you can have your different devices connected wirelessly in your home and they're using this Zigbee standard. So here's an example of a technology which operates in the same frequency as our wireless LANs and we have to coexist with but it's very very different.